Breaking up is hard to do, even when it comes to your relationship with your financial advisor. But if the volatile stock market and your investment returns have you rethinking the advice you've been getting, now may be the time to switch. Senior personal finance correspondent Sharon Epperson joins us with more. And really, a lot of people are thinking about this right now? Well, there are a lot of advisors out there, first of all. So there are plenty to choose from. Over 300,000 financial advisors in the U.S., managing nearly $20 trillion, according to Cerulli Associates. And there was a study that Ernst & Young did. It wasn't looking at whether or not, because of the market action, most recently people were moving. But what did they do in the last three years? And half of clients of wealth management providers decided they wanted to make a switch. And that includes with their banks or brokerages, as well as their financial advisors. And why they wanted to change wasn't so much their investment returns, but it was a life change. It was them changing jobs or having a baby, getting married, receiving an inheritance. These are some of the reasons why people decide that they need financial advice or they need better financial advice than what they're getting. You know, that makes sense because for most people, that's the only time they think about these things is when you're forced to think of the long-term actions. Exactly. So, okay, let's do some house cleaning at this point. Exactly. Um, what are some signs that your financial advisor might not be acting in your own best interest? Mm -hmm. Well, your financial situation, if it has changed, you want to make sure the advice changes as well, that that financial advisor understands your long-term plan and how that long-term plan may have changed. Keep in mind how much technology has changed over the last 10 years. Has the financial planning firm kept up with software, kept up with statements? Are they communicating with you regularly or just now they've gotten so big you just get a newsletter? You don't right. get a phone call. Or when you do get a phone call, you're getting, they're trying to sell you something, sell you a product that they're going to then get a commission on, and that's a key factor too. Have they explained to you the fees that you're be being charged and have they explained how they're making money? The key that you want to have for any financial advisor is to make sure that they uphold what's called the fiduciary standard, and that means that they're putting your best interests as the clients ahead of their own, not just trying to make money off of you. All right, so there are 50 ways to leave your lover, what's the best way to get rid of your financial advisor if you think it's time for a you know, As always, you have to plan ahead. You have to make sure that you have all your documents in order, and that includes your investment documents, but also your tax returns, your insurance policies, because you want this advisor to give you a holistic view of what they're going to do for you come next if you're switching advisors. Meet with a couple different prospective new advisors, just like you would kind of ask around for a second opinion with a doctor. You want to do the same when it comes to your financial advisor. You want to have a conversation, though, out of courtesy with your current advisor. Why? Let them know what your c concerns are. Let them know what you're thinking about doing, just because they may step up. You never know. Maybe they're, know. they're going to improve like their if, game. If I've gotten this many bad vibes and you've treated me this badly for so long, I'm not coming to you looking for a second so chance if you, on this And if stuff. you don't want to do that, then put it in here's writing. My, here's my note that says I want all my money and I exactly, want it Exactly, exactly. So put that in writing. Say you want to close your accounts and the the new advisor should be able to handle all of that. You shouldn't have to be able to be handling that paperwork That's yourself. Yeah. Uh, depending on where the investments are held and depending on what the, the advisory firm, the new advisory firm's policy is, you shouldn't have to really incur any additional costs, no tax consequences. No, you shouldn't have to sell the investments. Mm -hmm. You may have to pay a small termination fee, but... By and large, it should be a seamless process. Many people do it. And just make sure that you've really checked and interviewed and reviewed the new advisor to make sure that this is going to be the right fit. Sharon, thank you. Sure. Be strong. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it.